Is that music coming from my WJ? There's music coming from my WJ. That's a factory head unit. That couldn't be Bluetooth paired to it, could it be? Oh wow, we got wireless charging in a WJ. Oh my word. It is. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Dan H and welcome to the project. I'm sitting here in my new WJ. I really love this thing. I'm going to daily drive this thing. Actually, I was going to sell it. I wanted to flip it, but it's just too nice. So I'm going to keep it. But if I'm going to daily this thing, I'm going to have to have some tunes. Now, sure, this thing has an RB1 nav system with a 10 disc changer in the back. Whoa, fancy. But uh, I'm sorry. It's uh, about to be 2024 and we need some Bluetooth action. So I'm gonna show you how to get Bluetooth action all wireless with wireless charging in this WJ, this 20 year old WJ. And uh, it's gonna be awesome. We'll bring this car up to modern technology, Bluetooth charging all wireless, and I'll show you how it's done. So let's do this. All right guys, the first thing you're gonna need is a WJ Grand Cherokee. They were WJ's from 1999 all the way to 2004. It helps if you have a 2002 to 2004 because a 2002 three and fours had an auxiliary input unit on their displays. This is an RB1 nav unit, one of the first navigation units ever installed in vehicles. We don't actually use these anymore because they're antiquated. The old Google GPS is much more sophisticated, but hey, we're gonna use GPS, we're gonna use Bluetooth, so we don't actually need this unit to give me nav. We just wanna use the nav unit plug, that auxiliary plug, to power our gonna be Bluetooth system. The plug was used for a 10 disc changer. We have the disc changer that we're not gonna be using. It was also used for the nav, and you could use that input also for a Sirius XM unit too. So two, three, and four WJs, 2002, 2003, and 2004, we're gonna need a head unit. So if you don't have one, that's okay. You're just gonna have to do a couple extra steps this is good to go. So I'll show you uh, what you're gonna have to do if you wanna convert your 99, 2000, and 2001 WJs over to a system like this. Even though you don't have the screen in yours, you'll still be able to do it if you're a 2002, 2003, 2004, just cause you're gonna have that input and it's gonna be okay. So let me show you the stuff you're gonna need for this job. Like I said before, we have an RB1 navigation unit with the nice big screen display. You will have an auxiliary input right here. This is the extra set of plugs that you're gonna have with a unit like this. This is the main input. Uh, this is the antenna. I think this is the amplifier. And there we go. That's what we're gonna need, a unit like this. So you could get a unit like this or you don't need the actual nav. You could just get any 2002, three or four WJ, any Chrysler. I think that's 2002 and newer. I think it goes up to 2006. You're gonna need a, a head unit like that if you wanna keep that stock factory look. And what you might have is this, this older style, 99, 2000, 2001 WJs. They had these plugs like this. Let's see the old classic black and gray plugs. This is what you're gonna have if you have an older dub J. Get this ground off. All right, there's your ground. And here is your older style antenna. All right, so your old unit has to go if you wanna keep your factory unit. Can this unit get yourself a unit like this that has these plugs? I'll show you what you're gonna need also. You are gonna have to run your factory plugs that come out of your Jeep. You will need a kit adapter, a wire adapter. It's an installation kit for people that put in like Pioneer stereos and all that good stuff. You're gonna have to connect this to that. They just plug in. Can I do it with one hand? I don't know, probably not. Is it worth the demonstration? Hey, all right, I got it. So you're just gonna have to plug your factory radio in like so both sides and then you are also going to have to extract the wires that came from this unit 
out of the Jeep also. So when you pull the unit out of the junkyard from a 2002 or newer, make sure you get yourself a plug like this. And you're gonna have to wire up these wires to the kit that connects your old Jeep wires through the kit to your new Jeep wires. If you end up getting yourself an installation kit for a 2002 and newer Jeep, uh, it's not gonna really help you much in the install. It's actually just a quick map. So you could just line up the wires. You'll know that these here are the ground. These here are the front left speakers, front right speakers, all that. So that could be helpful as a map. Just gonna put that in a box with my other stuff. Uh, another thing is, well, this ground will get wired in to the ground. You'll have to clip this little head off and wire that in with the ground wires. You'll figure that out, that's simple. Uh, this is important though, if you wanna retain your radio, you'll need, you know what, let me just show you what this is right now. Here we go, an overland part out for demonstration purposes. We'll take this radio out, it's very simple, four screws, one, two, three, and four, slides right out. You unplug the connections like we did already. You'll have the connector. This is a nice chunk of wires you'll need. You won't need this plug. This is my factory auxiliary input that's wired to the disc changer <laughs> hidden behind all those parts. But we're gonna use the port, not these plugs. So you don't need this plugs. You will need these plugs and this antenna wire. This is different. So if you're gonna convert it, you're gonna have to cut off a nice chunk of this antenna wire. Let me show you the difference. Yeah, this is a completely different antenna plug than this, but they're possible to be spliced. I've done this before. You cut it, and what you do is you extract the outer sheath very carefully. They're nicely wound in a mesh. You'll have to take that little mesh, wire that all together like that, make that one big wire, and then you'll have to make a connection for that middle wire. So this wire gets connected separately from these wires, keep them isolated from one another, and then you could go ahead and do what I did here in your older Jeep, your 99 to 01, and then your 02 connection will be made on your 99 to 01, kind of like this. So you'll be able to plug your newly installed antenna wire into your newly installed factory unit and uh, that will just plug in right there. So that's what you'll need to bring your 99 to 01 WJ up to speed to the 2002 and 2003 WJs. If you already have 02 to 03, you're one step ahead of the game. Let's go back to the other WJ to see what else you'll need. Here we go, back to this WJ, and I'm using it as a storage unit for jumper cables right now. But here we go got our stuff together back to the story at hand again we're gonna go for one of these installed uh, another thing you will need you got to get yourself the power outlets I'm using one and two extra power outlets you can extract them from an ashtray well the newer WJ's didn't have an ashtray they were just another little storage compartment so get yourself these you can just pop out these charging ports like so And once they're out, like this, I went ahead, I jumped the gun, I wired up little male connectors over here. I got one and two. Uh, you're gonna need these little jumper quick connect splicey thingies. I got myself four of them. One, two, three, four. You're gonna need yourself some crimpers and wire strippers. And if you guys are gonna do that conversion from your 9901 and change it to a 2002 to 2004 WJ, you're gonna need a butt ton of these butt connectors. So get that stuff. Uh, the products you will need to purchase, I got myself this Samsung wireless charging pad. We got a fast charging pad I'm gonna put up front. And this is the Bluetooth unit. This Bluetooth is gonna hook up to the phone this Bluetooth unit has an auxiliary port right up top, and that is gonna connect 
to the system we're installing in the unit of the Jeep. I do not have that right now because it's installed, obviously, but this is what you're gonna need. You're gonna need yourself a Grom Audio Auxiliary input for a 2002 to 2004 Jeep Grand Cherokee or any Chrysler that's 2002, I believe. So that's basically what you're gonna need. I'll leave a link to as much of this stuff as possible in the description of this video. Check that out. It'll help you guys get all the stuff you need. Now, let's finally begin the install. All right, first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is take off this little bezel, take your 90 degree pick, punch it in, turn it 90 degrees, and pull. One on top, one on bottom. Do it at both sides, and this baby comes right out. All right here, you're gonna need four screws, Phillips head number twos, one, two, three, four. And you just go ahead and grab your unit, slide it out. You're gonna have to unplug it. The wires are already unplugged, obviously. This is demonstration purposes. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna have to wire in your audio unit. I do believe it's just a positive, a negative, and a switched on um, positive ground and accessory switch wiring go ahead and wire that up then there's a little plug that comes out of the unit it's got this little auxiliary shaped plug and you're just gonna go ahead and plug this all back in with your new antenna wire your new audio wire that goes in the auxiliary and the rest of your good connections like so now, once that's in, you're gonna have a 3.5 millimeter audio jack hanging down. What we could do with this now, we're gonna have to go ahead and pop out this ashtray area, this little storage compartment. <laughs> well, yeah, demonstration purposes, right? So that comes out oh, with just those little clips and this will come out after. This always comes out last and goes in first. These has one, two, three and four screws and then this unit comes out we're gonna go ahead and run this wire down out of the way we might not even have to take this out but since it fell out <laughs> why not I'll show you it out there so that goes back in so once the wires ran what I did with mine well mine's the ashtray not the storage unit but I drilled a little hole here and I fed my wire through I'll show you in a minute Oh boy, back to a more civilized WJ. Gonna go ahead and put our pick in, pop it out. There's four clips on either side, pop it out. There we go. Ooh, chapstick. Can you bring me my chapstick? No, Napoleon. But my lips hurt real bad. So here's what I had going. Uh, in my WJ, uh, prior to this Grey Hornet and the Green Hornet, I had this coming down. It ran through here, and then the cord came out, and I would just plug it into my phone and just rest my phone somewhere over here, connecting it right to the audio. But my new phone doesn't have any audio jacks. All the new phones are Bluetooth, so I want this thing ran to a Bluetooth device, but I don't want to plug a Bluetooth device into these power outlets. I can't stand wires and it's just too much crap going on. So here we go. We're gonna put this stuff all internally. Now let me close this up so we can make some room. I'll show you what we're gonna do. We're gonna open up our box and we're gonna start the install. All right, I got my auxiliary cord out of the way. I got my ashtray unit down, down and out. First thing I wanna do is I wanna find which one is my constant power out. So what you're gonna do is take your cell phone charger, go ahead and plug it in, see which one lights up when the vehicle is off. Is this it? No, I don't think that's this. Let me just check by plugging in the phone. It's kind of an important step if you want to maintain charging and fast charging. No, I don't believe this is it. So it's going to be this one. Doo doo, charging, fast charging. All right, this is the golden ticket. <laughs> it does say power outlet, but just for testing purposes, I showed you. Power outlet, this is the side I'm going to tap into for my cell phone charging device. This one is gonna be black, black ground, and purple with a white tracer. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and keep it consistent. This outlet has the black and the purple with white tracer. So I'm gonna tap in to these wires and connect this for my charging device. So I have these little guys here. These are gonna be my little taps. Make sure that this part is enough to connect to the wires, but without severing it. You don't want it too tight, but you don't want it too loose. Make sure you have gauge specific taps. And what we're gonna do is, come on, just gonna lay this wire right in the middle right there, close it up, and give it a good crunch. There we go. Simple as that. One right there. And here comes number two. Squeezed right in. Now we're gonna take the male ends that we crimped on and these just get plugged right into the side. That's really simple. One and two. All right, now if we did this correctly, we should have fast charge and we plug our charger in. There we go. Fast charging. <laughs> Great. So easy. All right, let's remove this for now and we'll go over to the other side. Here we go. Let's get ourselves a power tap. Power tap. That sounds like a nice 80s metal band. <laughs> power tap. One, two, and we'll plug her in. Easy peasy. Now, when you plug these in, it locks the clamp closed. <laughs> these things are great. All right, let's open up our first product of this side. It's gonna get the Bluetooth. Got this nice and sealed for our security. This is what this thing looks like. Oh, it's falling apart. What is this? Hey, it's a remote. <laughs> cool. Here is the unit. All right, we got a Soshi, Skoshi, we got a Soshi Bluetooth adapter, and it has the auxiliary input, which is very handy. We're gonna be utilizing that feature with this setup, and we're just gonna plug her in right there. She's in, and we got our long wire, our nice, Three five millimeter jack, and we're gonna plug that in, and let's see if she works. Let's go into the auxiliary mode. Look at that! It is on. Bluetooth is blinking. Let's go see if we can pair to it. There we go. Looks like we have the device, and we're pairing. Bluetooth request, we'll pair. Yeah, okay, connected for all audio. Let's see, go on YouTube. We'll play some copyright free music. Put up this volume a little bit. Oh, wrong button, <laughs> the old phone. Let's play it here. Bluetooth volume up. I think we gotta crank this up and then change source. There we go. Now the trick with this thing is, it doesn't allow you to put the volume up on your device. Oh, you can put it up on your device, like so. But it only allows you to lower it on the head unit. So if you lower it, you can't go back up. So that kind of sucks. You gotta switch the source, crank the volume, then source it back to your input and you could control the input on this phone. 
Just like that. There we go. So it works. Enough of that. Let's finish the install. All right. There's always a couple things I forget. <laughs> you got to get your electrical tape. We're going to want to wrap this sucker so it doesn't short on anything. Get some tape up here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this baby. I'm going to cover all of the exposed ground. I don't need any ground interference in my audio either. And I'm going to go ahead and wrap this device tightly in place so it doesn't fall out. Get some wraps going on here. There we go. Insulated and wrapped. Hmm. I'll wrap this up a little bit so it doesn't get pulled. I'll give it some slack so it doesn't bend. There we go. Right around the collar of this device. My Bluetooth. All right. Now I got to tuck this in safely somewhere. There's a cavity way down in here. Let's see. There's always crap down in here. It's where the shifter cables run out of the center console. Look, I got some crap already. <laughs> new Jeep, new owner. Previous owner had a, hey, speed perk rewards. Let me get some trash out of here. All the stuff that falls through your console. I think that's it. All right. I'll go ahead and lay this down in that little channel down and out of the way there we go so it doesn't hit anything when I push the ashtray back down I laid that sucker way down in there nice and neat can't see it next up the phone charger got myself a nice Amazon special super fast wireless charger that's what i'm talking about i hate wires especially when you're driving the less wires the better i uh i'm not really into that whole wireless headset hands-free thing i don't have any airpods i still hold the phone to my ear i don't know maybe i'm old i don't know uh that's a uh, that's just a fact people <laughs> so that's what i do uh and I don't like to plug things in, certainly not when I could just charge it in to a pad. So this is the pad. It comes with, oh good, it comes with a wire. Got ourselves a nice little wire. Um, I'm not going to use this because I already have a wire ready to go. Where did I put it? Aha! I already got myself a wire. It's already connected to my fast charging car charger. Uh, this unit, it comes with a fast charging wall outlet. I'll save this for another project. Don't need that now. I'm just going to use my original car charger and I'm just going to plug it in like we did before. My apologize to you, good folks, and my apologize to Samsung Super Fast Charging. Apparently it did not like my old and grody white cable. We're going to use this black USB. It's a USB-C to USB-C. And where'd my tape go? We'll just tape this baby in instead. Always adjustments and unforeseen. Well, I should have foreseen it. <laughs> I should have just used what was included, right? Uh, well... I can't say that a hundred percent in its entirety because I'm not using this, so <laughs> whatever. We're making this stuff up as we go. All right, now I'm going to tuck this thing in once again. Come on, baby. Tuck, tuck, tuck. And I will grab the end of this. Make sure it is routed to the bottom so it comes out where we can't see it. All right. Now we'll try our unit, our charging unit, Samsung Super Fast, Super Duper Charger Unit. Plug that in.
there we go fast wireless charging you saw it guys you saw it right here on the project fast wireless charging oh yeah all right let's get this Bluetooth going we'll rock out for a little bit You have it guys, Bluetooth, wireless charging, and wireless music. <laughs> Welcome to 2024, WJ. You did it. All right guys, thank you so much for watching. Really appreciate you tuning in to this project. This is awesome. Bluetooth and this baby. I love it, wireless charging. It feels like a new car. You could probably also put a head unit like this into a ZJ or an XJ, now that I think about it. If you splice in what you have to do to get a 99, 2000, and 2001 WJ going like this, you could do that to an XJ or ZJ. Why not? So that's it, guys. We got uh, modern technology in our Jeeps. I'm so happy. I love it. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, remember to like, subscribe, share this video, and uh, I'll catch you guys on the next project. Peace.